grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and, Je Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This is words of Isaiah in the uh, epistle lesson today. For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. This is the gospel. <laughs> this is good news. This is our challenge. And even in this country with history and uh, on the license plate to the south it says, in God we trust. On our money it's, uh, you, it says, in God we trust. But it's, it's usually now it's, in this God we trust. So it's becoming for us here in America more and more difficult to express our Christian faith. It is becoming law. It has been law. It has been a challenge as to where and when and how we can go about being the children of God. But here we are. You're here this day. And God is still with us. God is present, as we said in the open hymn. He is here. And, and from the very open, we get, the, okay, our, our, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. You know, why are you here? In church. In time until eternity. Why? Why? Because to give thanks to the Lord. To call upon his name. And it's often I had the hymn first uh, and then the confession because the hymn was an indication to the people in the rest of the of the, the facility that the service is beginning. Please come, or they wait until they, they, they drive up in the parking lot during that time. And so, uh, by function, because the the confession belongs at the beginning. Before you begin, before you come into the house of worship, the confession, it says, I am a sinner. Because you know, with a contrite heart, with sorrow for your sin, recognizing your sinfulness, recognizing that we, there's nothing that we can bring before God. We are nothing on our own. But God has changed that. And our confession is to receive, to recognize our need for forgiveness, and we receive that forgiveness from our, for our sins. And he comes to us. And, and then all the things, here, glorious name, sing to him, sing praises to him. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. That was the objective of, of the Old Testament lesson today from Moses. Moses' swan song, final remembrance concept. As he was telling the people, you know, uh, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. This is who you are. You are God's people. You know, in the Old Testament, and it's in these texts too as you look through them. Anytime it was single people, it's talking about God's people. We are God's people. And the plural, for many centuries, decades, centuries now, it's been peoples, the word has been transferred, Gentiles. And that's somewhat misleading. I like the book. Peoples. Because peoples are our, our evangelism subjects, objects. The, those who are not yet the people of God, but are still the peoples. And it is our job to come to learn the word of God, to learn what we call the gospel lesson, the hidden treasure, the mysteries of God. It says, here's, here's what God has revealed to us. A lot of things that we wonder, why am I here? Why is all this stuff going on? What's all this trouble? Why all these things? It's, it's a mystery that God understands. And this is what Moses is reminding the people that he has now been a servant to lead them out of Egypt. And then this uh, just days into the wilderness as he reminds them of these things that you're a holy people it wasn't because you're so special it wasn't because you had socially redeeming qualities it wasn't because 
You're accused of being, a, we used to call them goody two shoes. I don't even think they go that far. They just call them demons and devils and all sorts of things that, that they cast upon us now in, in, in an attempt to cause us such anxiety that it shortens our lives to be killed every day by making our lives miserable, trying to live out our Christianity before God. After all, is that not what we are, little Christians? The sign that is upon us, the sign of Christ and his cross upon us? It's hard to live that. Moses will remind him, it's not what you have done, it's what God has done. It is God, our Lord, who has carried us out of Egypt, brought us, us out of slavery to sin, death, and the power of the devil. You've heard that. Sin, death, and the power of the devil. And he has led us into his blessings. He will provide for us. And that whole 40 years experience that we have in, in Moses' writings are to explain to us that those 40 years were pretty tough for those folks. And they complained constantly. Complained against Moses and against God. And, and sometimes the leaders faltered. <laughs> Herod says, oh, there was just this, throw all this stuff in there and, and, and all this gold and stuff like that and a big fire and out comes this calf. Yeah, well, it says, hey, brother, get behind me, Satan. Yeah. Sometimes leaders falter as well. They fall to, to the temptations, not only sin, death, and the devil, but the greatest of the sins from within us. It's always there. It's always a part of us. And sometimes we, we just can't seem to get a handle on it, to get a grasp on what is it all about? How am I going to get out of this? Calamity comes. It happens to all of us. Uh, we're, we're trying to get our house ready in Maryland for sale. Last night I got the word from the next door neighbor, a tree fell on our sunroom. Oh, thank you very much. Lord, I can't get the regular stuff done. You're putting this big thing on things. To, how many things? And you guys, you guys deal with the same thing. Emergencies happen all the time. Strange things. Not an emergency, but things that we have worked ourselves into time after time after time. And now we're beginning to suffer the consequences of those choices. There, our chickens are coming home to roost. Yeah. The birds are making nests in their hair. It ain't fun. It ain't easy. We want to, Lord, how long, oh Lord? Well, just to get from Egypt to Canaan land took them 40 years. The man looking in the in, looking for just looking for land to buy. He kind of is looking at this piece of land and he stumbles on a hidden treasure. He stumbles on a hidden treasure. Sells everything that he has, and he goes and sells everything else he has to buy that field because he knows that the treasure that's hidden there is so much more valuable than anything else he could. Same thing with the, the, the pearl of great price. This pearl salesman who seeks out pearls that he can sell. That's his business. And he goes out, and one time he stumbles across. The perfect pearl. Absolutely perfect. Great, great treasure. And he sells everything that he has. So what? Both of them. What is this pearl of great What is this hidden treasure? Of course, it's Jesus Christ. But even more than that, it's the mysteries of God. The mysteries of how this, in the, in the epistle lesson today, in the epistle lesson, it's... It says, we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. All things. Go through the text and all this. All the times that all things come up. This is everything. All things. Remember that. All things are under God's control. 
the decline in, let's just pick one thing, our finances in the last few years, among a myriad of other kinds of things, challenges as a country here, is that God, God does not make evil happen. It happens on its own. But God makes all things for those who are called by God to be his people. He works for good. All the bad stuff. It, it, took, it took 40 years to go from Egypt to Canaan land, to the promised land. For all of us, here in time, God leaves some of us around a whole lot longer than others. I was here earlier and was walking through the Garden of the Saints, departed. And, and uh, a couple of families that have uh, had, 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 that have departed from us in the last few years. Some of us have longer than others. Some of us are untimely, de untimely death. It's God's time. A number of times, God knows what he's doing. And, so, and, and he knows when the right time is. Sometimes when I've, 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 I have a list, I says, I have a list of things that when I get to heaven, if it's still bothering me, I ask God. And I say, hey, uh, what about this? What about that? But as, as age has come in me and I found out, you know, when I hear more things about somebody's untimely death and there were some little things that happened just before they died, just weeks or months, and that were maybe, maybe something is turning and they're, they're, Jesus has refound them and is bringing them back into the fold. And, and God knows that, of course. And he says, I got you now. Okay, you're back with me. Come on home before, because I know you can't withstand the temptations to fall away again. God knows. We have to leave it to God for those judgments. He knows, but he makes all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. For those who he foreknew, whose name whose name was written in the book of life before he began creation. And he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn, Jesus, the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those whom he predestined, he also called. Those whom he called, he also justified. Those whom he justified, he also glorified in heaven. The glory is the glory's in heaven. It's a little bit of glory here. As some do a marvelous job and in proclaiming the wondrous works of God who show how God's forbearance, how God's patience, how God's working with us to hold on to us, working us through our depressions when we begin to doubt God, doubt his presence among us. He said, he songs want to tell us that God is watching. No, he's here. God is present here now. Wherever two or three are gathered, actually, he's present if it's just one of you. In his word, in his fellowship, the communion of saints, is with us. It's the way he has designed it. He separated the people of Israel from Egypt so that they might become a unified people. Hmm. You do understand that they brought their idols out of Egypt and, and they took them into the promised land with them just as to hedge their bets on this God that killed all of those who are over age 20 except Moses and who else? Joshua, well he was younger. Well anyway, 
See, I've forgotten too. God. Okay, blank us to tell you where am I now? Whatever. I love that. It's on tape and I forgot where we go. Okay. God molds us, keeps us, holds on to us through all these struggles. Luther himself, what reminded him that all things work together for good for those that are called according to his purpose, God worked this for him. He says, what's the key? Luther said, I am baptized. Auf Deutsch, of course, but I am baptized. That's what he said. For us as well, to remember, that's what carries you through your depressions. That's what carries you through your doubts. That and being attached to the word. The man that found the treasure, the man that found the pearl, they weren't looking for those things. They were just leading life, leading their business, doing their, doing their normal kinds of things, and they find it. They didn't find it. God found them. God placed the treasure there. God placed the pearl there. God did that, all prepared it, ready to go. The eyes of faith, that's what you say in, 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 the, in, the, in the prayer for today. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love. And as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, and the greatest of these is love. Because we love because God first loved us. And then that receiving your promise, we may love what you have commanded. That's in the, in the intro again. It says, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Hear what he has as instructions for us. The commandments, that, that plays on our sinfulness. Because it's much easier for us to respond to commands because if we don't do that, that we're not supposed to, if we do something we're not supposed to do, that God is going to punish, God is not, he does not keep track of any of our sins. His children, his people, he only sees those things which the Holy Spirit does through them and often not even realizing because you are living out your life as a Christian, as a child, as a little Christ, taking up your crosses. That isn't the thing, the disease and all this kind of thing. But how you handle those things may be a cross. How you handle it in the face of all of those that says, come on, I can fix you. Here's the drug. Here's the surgery that that I think you need. Here's the, particularly with, with what they're doing with the kids today. <laughs> Off that soapbox. Okay. Well, things that God God helps us through all of those things, and in His Word we learn of the mysteries of God, and, and we find these treasures. Sometimes uh, this thing uh, used the word predestination. Boy, has that been abused in the history of the Christian church in the last 500 years, particularly. And this is predestination. All those things. What is, how does this work? How do all these things, how does all the, with the eyes of faith, hope and love, faith opens our eyes to see God working in our lives day by day. For constant prayer with God, every little detail, God is, you know, one of my favorite is, is the scripture says God knows every hair that falls out of your head. And some of us keep God busy more than others. But every little detail God knows. Sometimes for his purposes, he lets things take their natural sinful course until the time comes for him to open up a door or something, or something to happen, or something to say, see, this is what I have for you. And sometimes, so, and it comes down to, you miss a light, and you get stuck. Well, I don't know what for purpose, because I was in a hurry, God. I'll take a, take a deep breath, I'll rest till I get it, and all of a sudden, whoo, there goes the car through the red light. What? It's, you begin to see things differently than other people do. 
You see how God works all things for good for those who love him, who are called according to his purposes. His purposes, not yours, not mine. His purposes to his glory and the furtherance of his kingdom here and always. Because that's why we're here, is to learn how we do those things, how we go about it. It's, it's a, uh, all... It's, God keeps his promises. You're here today. It's a pretty strong indication that you're called, that your name is written in the book of life because you're hearing this gospel. God wants you to hear it. Even if you have great doubts now, God wants you to hear that, wants you to be strengthened by that, wants you to remember your baptism, wants you to be strengthened by his body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine, to be edified by the word that he has placed before you in your bulletin, in your, in your insert. I haven't seen one of those things yet. I wanted to ask about them. They have inserts with the green writing. These things, all day, all week long. Take a look at them. Take a look at the words and how they come together again. All things. Find where all things are written. Circle them. Find all the things that it's not what we do. It's not what the people of Israel did. It's what God has done in Christ Jesus for us. And he has conquered. We ain't going to die. Our time will come to an end. And he will send his angels to us to take us to be with him. Whether it's individual or collectively. And we pray, come Lord Jesus. Part of our meal prayer, it's part of a, hey God, right, this, it's a struggle. He says, yeah, yeah. Boy, have I got something for you to do. Boy, have you got a witness to give. Let me strengthen you to do that, to be that, to his glory, the furtherance of his kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.